This week we're going to learn how to turn a pandas data frame containing upper air data into an X-Array data set. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week I want to talk about X-Ray again, because when we talk about X-Ray, we get feedback that more videos on how to use it would be helpful. So what I thought would be a good exercise is to take a simple data set, like an upper air sounding data set, and let's turn that pandas data frame into an X-Ray, and then do some operations on that X-Ray data set to go ahead and clean it up a little bit. And it really shows you some of the power of things like attributes in the data set. So we're going to do some imports from date time. I'm going to import the date time class from metpy.units. I'm going to import the units registry. And from siphon.simplewebservice.wyoming, I'm going to import Wyoming upper air. And we've talked lots about how to get upper air data using Siphon in prior MetPy Mondays, so I'm not going to go into too great of depth on that. If you want to know more about it, go ahead and check those MetPy Mondays out. I'm going to get a date time. I'm just going to use the example from the Siphon documentation of September 10th, 2017, a 6Z sounding and the Miami station. And then we will request the data using the Wyoming upper air class, the request data method. And that takes our date and station. And we'll look at the head of that data frame just to remind ourselves what we get. And we can see one of the disadvantages of a data frame as the data structure for this is we have a lot of duplicated data. The time, latitude, longitude, elevation, precipitable water, station number, and station name are the same value for every row, but we don't really have any other way to encode that data into our data frame. We also have the problem of data frames and units not necessarily playing nicely together. So if you remember, we have the units attribute that Siphon attaches to the data frame, which is just a dictionary of what the variable name is and the unit that it's in. And then we have to use a helper to turn this into a dictionary of quantities. So it's not necessarily the most straightforward thing. And we have some data duplication. Let's play with X-Array and see what kind of data structure we can get out of this. Conveniently, there is a to X-Array method that we can call on our data frame. And that gives us a data set object. So you can see it's got an index dimension, an index coordinate, and there are 15 data variables, none of which have any units, but they are all there. And we've got our duplicated latitude, longitude, elevation, and so on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is attach units. And if we go back up and look at our unit attribute on the data frame, we see things that don't have units are none. Everything else is a string. So I'm going to write a little for loop here. That's for var name and unit in that dictionary of units dot items. If unit, so if it's not none, then on our data set, we're going to retrieve that variable name and we're going to assign the variable name times units and the unit that's in our dictionary. Now, if we look at our data set, expand our data variables, we see these are now all quantities. So that's great. Uh, we've successfully assigned units, but we still have a lot of duplicated data. So how can we clean up this data array even more? And we need to set some coordinates. Index is not a very useful coordinate. So let's take care of the coordinates first. 
So we're going to call the set chords method. And I'm going to set pressure and height as the coordinates. And now we see pressure and height are in coordinates. Okay, so that solves that problem for us. Let's see what we can do about cleaning up some of this redundant data. And a good place for it would be attributes, because it is an attribute of the data. We can call it ds.adders and set that with a dictionary. I'm going to set the station to an iSelect index equals zero. I want the station variable, and I just want the data from that. And we can basically just copy this. So we're going to have a station, station number, latitude, longitude, elevation, precipitable water, and time are our redundant variables. So I'm going to call this one station number, station latitude, longitude, elevation, the precipitable water, and the time. And most of these we just have to follow along. Number in our data array, this is just called latitude, longitude, elevation, and PW. Time is a little bit trickier though. We don't want to just have a string, we want to go ahead and make it a date timestamp because that's going to be the most useful data type. So I'm going to use string parse time on the string of that data. And then we have to specify a format, remember, so that's going to be year, month, day, and that's a four digit year. So use a capital Y. And there's a T, hour, minute, second. And there's a fractional second, but it's not doesn't need to be parsed. So we just have to figure out what that format is. And we can expand that or we can look at what the string representation is. And we see that there are nine zeros. All right, so that should assign the appropriate attributes. Oh, we missed a parenthesis here. All right, so now if we look at our data set, go down here to attributes, station, number, latitude, longitude, elevation, precipitable water, and time. So those are all united, and they all look like they parsed correctly. But we still have them now up here in our data array in this data set, and they're redundant. We don't need them. So we need to drop those off. For that, we call ds.drop and pass a list to labels of what we want to drop. So station, station number, time, latitude, longitude, elevation, and PW. And now if we look at our data set, we've got a data set with coordinates of pressure and height, a dimension of the index, the just the zero base index. We have our variables, our measured variables, temperature, dew point, speed, direction, and then the parsed U and V winds, which are pretty handy, so we'll leave those there. And everything else got parsed down into an attribute. So as you can see, the data array built into a data set in X-Array can be a really handy structure to use, and it's not that hard to take something that you already have in a pandas data frame and convert it over to a data set. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you on next week's MatPy Monday.